Hi everyone, I'm John Muskell from JM Coastal. This is the second video in a three-part video series on developing a tidal model of the North Sea. In the first video, I introduced a couple of apps that I developed that made the whole process of ge generating a computational mesh for the simulation a lot easier. In this second video, I'll introduce a new app I've developed that's designed to carry out a tidal simulation using the previously generated mesh and also using a global tidal constituent database. Uh, the app is written in Python within the Django framework, so it ties in quite well with the Python scripts that are used to control the Telemark simulations. Uh, the app uh, basically simplifies the whole procedure of uh, setting up the model parameters, and it also means that you don't have to have the model uh, installed on your local computer, and you can carry out simulations on a remote server. Uh, the app also automates some of the uh, common uh, procedures in modelling, such as calibration and plotting. So let's dive straight in and look at the app. From the Telemark 2D tab on the Coast web page, click on Tidal Run. Here we arrive at another page where we upload our mesh file and the boundary conditions file associated with it. You can click on the information symbol for more details. Then click the first Choose File button to upload a mesh from your file system. And then click the second Choose File button to upload the associated boundary conditions file. You should then select the appropriate projection for your mesh from the drop down menu and then click select. If you have uploaded a valid mesh and boundary conditions file, you should arrive at the model setup page. This page displays the mesh on the map with the open boundaries shown in red. You can zoom in to inspect your mesh. Model setup is divided into four sections, each of which can be expanded to choose the model parameters. First we click on the Run Definition tab. Give your run a title and then name the results file with the .slf extension. You then enter a time step for your simulation in seconds. The next tab defines the time interval for writing the model output to the results file. You then enter a start date and time for your simulation and an end date and time, and then choose the variables that you would like to output to the results file. After this is complete, close the Run Definition tab. Then click on the Model Options tab. First we choose the initial conditions from four options. We will choose zero elevation for this run. Note that if you select constant elevation or constant depth, an extra dialog box appears where you must enter an initial value. We then choose whether we would like to simulate tidal flats, which we leave as the default, which is yes. There are then two options for the treatment of tidal flats, and three options for the treatment of negative depths, which can occur when the mesh elements dry out. Both of these are left as the default option, which is 1. There is an information symbol that you can click on for more information on the options from the Telemap manual. We then enter the bed friction parameterization we would like to use and a value for the bed friction coefficient. After everything is complete, close the tab. We then click on the open boundaries tab. We choose a boundary condition option for both open boundaries. We then select a tidal database from which to derive the tidal constituents to calculate the tidal forcing at the open boundaries. I will choose the TPXO database that I mentioned earlier. Once the boundary conditions are chosen correctly, you should see that the open boundaries on the map have turned from red to green. The final tab offers some additional options. The first option is for automatic calibration. If this option is selected, you can upload a zip file containing tide gauge observations that fall within the model domain and cover the period you would like to simulate. For tide gauge observations around the UK, visit the link shown on the screen now. Calibration often involves carrying out a simulation, looking at the results and then adjusting the model parameters and repeating this procedure until you are happy with the result. Or if you have a cluster of computers, you could launch various simulations with different parameters and choose the setup that gives you the best result. This automatic calibration procedure 
Compares the model results to the observations after each run and then adjusts the parameters, such as the bed friction or the boundary conditions, before carrying out another simulation. The user can define the number of times to iterate over this procedure as the model parameters are adjusted to try and bring the model closer to observations. There is also an option to save time series plots derived from the best run in the auto calibration procedure. The last option allows you to enter a mobile phone number and receive a text message when the model runs complete. Once all the model parameters are defined, you click Start Simulation. You should see this page if the run has started successfully. Once your model run is finished, you'll receive a text message telling you whether the simulation was completed successfully or not, and giving you the total runtime. If you click the Save Plot option, you'll also receive a link that you can open in your browser. The link will lead you to a web page that contains a slideshow of the time series of the model versus the observed elevations. You can flick through this slideshow and see how well the auto calibration procedure worked. Well that's the end of the second video in the series. Uh, the third and final video in the series will focus on plotting and model output visualisation. Uh, if you'd like more information on the coastal or river models or the modelling platforms or applications that can be developed at JM Coastal, uh, please get in touch at uh, john.maskell at jmcoastal.co.uk or visit the website at www.jmcoastal.co.uk.